Um, hello everyone, I'm Neharika. Uh, I'm from India. I was uh, this making language selection smarter in Wikipedia was a project I did as an OPW intern with Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, you must have, you might have attended the talk about OPW by Sumana Hariharishwara. It was just before this one. So, OPW is the outreach program for women, which runs twice every year. So I was an intern for round seven earlier this month, this year. Okay, so making language selection in Wikipedia smarter. Uh, you might already be Wikipedia contributors or users, and you might have seen the long list of languages uh, in the la Wikipedia sidebar, which appears, uh, which is currently, which appears somewhat like this. Uh, it, uh, the languages you see are sorted in their alphabetical order of the ISO codes. Uh, this language list can get uh, really terribly long because uh, Wikimedia, Wikipedia caters to a lot of languages. So our aim in this project was to make this list smarter and customized for the user. Now this, what we're after, we're done with this, uh, the current list, if you enable the beta feature, which the language list is supposed to appear somewhat like this. So the languages that you see here are all somewhat similar because they are all Indian languages. This list was customized for an Indian user. The screenshot was taken when I was back in India. So the languages are all Indian. And beneath that, you see a white button with a help. And uh, beneath that, you see a label which says 72 more languages. So on clicking the button, you get this pop-up window. Uh, please tell me if I'm going a little too fast or something, because I'm nervous. OK, so the pop-up box, this is the compact language selector. It is basically an instance of the universal language selector, which was developed by the language engineering team at Wikimedia in 2012. So you can search one of the collapsed languages, or they are sorted by regions in this pop-up box. Right, so the language list is pretty short. It's usually just nine, restricted to nine or seven. Then we come to, well, let's discuss about why we needed such a feature and what drove us to do this project in the first place. So uh, Wikipedia caters to about 400 languages, uh, sometimes in access, excess of that. So there are, these are, there are about 400 different wikis uh, running in their own capacity. Right, so if there are 400 languages, the language list is ten, tends to be really long and it becomes cumbersome if you want to search your choice of language repeatedly in this list, um, which is uh, often for a power user. So this became so much of a problem that uh, there were some extensions and scripts that came up to solve this issue. The first one uh, you see here is the Opera extension for this serving this purpose. Uh, this Opera extension inputs uh, a small list of languages that you provide. And these languages appear right on top in a highlighted bubble. So this is uh, firstly restricted only for Opera users. And secondly, the highlighting the box seems to be a bad sign decision. But besides that, it serves the purpose pretty well. Then uh, we had a uh, user script by user Lampak, my languages script, uh, simplifying navigation be between Wikipedias and languages known by the user. So again, this script takes works on a similar way. You provide an array of language codes, and it, using JavaScript, it hides all the languages that are not in this array, saving those. Um, the, using the script is a bit cumbersome and not very Use, uh, easy for a casual user because you need to apply the script on your own wiki space. So then the third reason we needed this was the different ordering requirements of different wikis. For example, the Hungarian wiki requires English to be on top, and different wikis might require their own language to be on top of the list. Other, others, like the English Wikipedia, need them to be in alphabetical order. So we need to customize, uh, to make the, normalize it, to make it uniform. So there were some deciding factors that we consider in making the list, list short. That means we, uh, which languages that should you see in your list. So the first one is the browser language, the most obvious choice, the language that your browser 
needs is the one we definitely we try to incorporate it in the list if the language if the article is supported in that language then then we have the previous choices the previous choices of the user are stored in the wiki in the user's browser itself as as cookies in the uh, user's browser itself so we accommodate up to five previous choices as of now then we have regional preferences this is the most strongest point uh, we find out the regional preferences using the ip address uh, the data for the regional preferences comes from the cldr uh, i'll discuss about the cldr in a bit uh, after this we have the popular choices so what is the most popular choice for a given for example if a given article is most popular in a russian language so russian language is supposed to be in the list there's a star mark over there because this is a feature this is yet to be implemented and then we have a featured article or a good article so there are some articles which are marked as a featured or a good article so we try to incorporate those languages in the shorter list right so let's discuss a bit about the pop-up box that we saw in the earlier slide the compact language selector box so the compact language selector box comes from something called the universal language selector. The universal language selector was, as I told earlier, it was developed by the language engineering team at Wikimedia Foundation. Um, it serves three important purposes. First, the interface language. So you can choose the language of your menus, the language of your labels using the ULS. Secondly, the topography, that means Cho what choice of font you want to see. And lastly, the input methods of the keyboard mappings. That means that you can type in a language that is not supported by your keyboard. It provides an, a virtual keyboard for typing in languages that you don't have available on your keyboard. Right, so then we come to the CLDR. Uh, CLDR stands for the Unicode Common Local Data Repository. Now this is, a uh, an online repository which contains the language data for every country, that means uh, uh, by the population. Like for example, in India, whatever languages are spoken are sorted by the po percentage of population that speaks that language in descending order. Uh, I was supposed to show a chart uh, regarding the CLDR, but uh, my Wi-Fi is not working for some reason, so I'll skip that for now. Uh, Okay, so the ULS, uh, I have some screenshots from the ULS. So you can choose your display language uh, by clicking on the cog in the left sidebar. So you can access the uh, display language. You can change your display language setting. Um, then we have your language settings. That means your uh, whatever your choice of language, display language. This is the same as the previous one. The display language comes by clicking on this and the fonts so you can choose your font and your keyboard mappings right okay so let's discuss a bit about the design of the interlanguage uh, link list there was not much to design because the list was pretty fixed so this is the current design uh, you see a button and a label beneath that so and an edit links button further beneath that the edit links button is not part of this project it was uh, it's a button where you can uh, add another new language if you translate the article in a new lang language so you can click on that and you can add that language link over there okay so this is how the current design looks like and the proposed design uh, changes the button somewhat uh, the number of the collapsed languages is integrated with the button over there Right, so this is a proposed design um, that's supposed to be changed somewhat in the near future. Then we come to the implementation. Uh, first is quality indicators. So this were some uh, implementation issues that were faced while implementing this project. So the first one is quality indicators got lost. So if you look at the image on the right, you see a green star against Polsky and a yellow st star against something I can't pronounce. So the green star uh, tells us that it is a good article and the yellow star tells us it is a featured article. So I might be switching the both. 
Okay, so the good article and feature article are tags which are given to articles which are especially good in that given language. So while I was, uh, while we were working on this project, so these indicators were, we cannot preserve these indicators within the ULS as of now. As of now, the ULS, the pop-up box that you saw earlier, does not support uh, uh, us to, you know, accommodate these, you uh, these links, these uh, quality indicators, right? Then um, next was the language panel placement for RTL languages. So this was uh, again an issue because uh, we had to uh, place the panel in a, on the other side of the screen for RTL languages. So this posed a problem again. We both have we have uh, solved this issue recently. Uh, so then lastly we come to the preserved title property so preserved title uh, if you hover if you see the languages that appear here appear in the native language font that means if it's russian it appears in the russian language so preserving the title was an important uh, requirement if you hover on the uh, on the language then the language name appears there in english so this was the preserved title property again this was lost if when we were redoing this so again, we had we tried to uh, we have we have this in the shorter list now, but not in the collapsed languages list. We cannot preserve the title property as of now. So we are working on that because that needs change in the ULS uh, source code, which was outside the scope of this project. Then we have concerns. So what were the concerns uh, raised by the community uh, regarding this project? So there were several. First one was use of GeoIP might be interpreted as trying to enforce certain languages in certain geographical areas. So this is um, not quite true. Um, we are not trying to enforce you to use Indian languages if you're in India, but uh, again, you could ch you, the language list could change if your pre previous choices were different. Uh, but again, to a certain extent, uh, this might be a problem. Then trusting GeoIP, this is a bigger issue. Uh, GeoIP is not 110% trustworthy. The CLDR data is not 100% accurate. Uh, we have had lots and lots of users uh, saying that the languages they see are not what they expected to see because they live in some areas where their border is shared by another country and the language they speak is the one spoken in the other country. So. Uh, that's again an issue. So the best way to tackle this one would be to improve the data and which would be by the CLDR. So as in the CLDR improves, our uh, data here would improve. That means, so the best way you could help here was is to just go up to CLDR, their website, and just add, their, add the language of your choice in, the, in your region, and they could add that in the next edition of CLDR. So they, they release different versions. Next one is due soon. Okay, so then we have uh, advertising. A multilingual Wikipedia is uh, one of the strongest held beliefs. That means we want to advertise that, yes, so there are so and so many languages. And uh, we try to promote and protect as many languages as we can. So it's, uh, you know, some people take pride in that. They see the long list of languages in the sidebar. So that's again a very uh, good thing, but again, it poses a problem in searching for the languages. So that's why we had to come up with this project. Uh, the best solution would be like we could increase the languages in the sidebar, but again, that would not be very you know, helpful. Then we have it's useless for people who use uh, virtual private networks or proxies. Uh, this is quite true. Uh, we cannot uh, detect if you're if you're using a proxy that routes you through another country. Then then our, uh, it's pretty useless for you because you'll be seeing the languages seen in that other country. So a, a possible solution to de uh, to see this would be to get the time zone from the users uh, uh, from the user's browser and system and maybe try to see if the time zone and the country that they are coming from matches. That could be a possible solution. Um, we are working on these. Then we come to customization. Okay, so customization, uh, this has been a very major feature request. 
Uh, it's the one that the Opera extension and the user script uh, used. That means that the user is able to provide the languages that he, she wants to see. This, what you see here, is a comment by a user. So automation is never going to work in a satisfying way, etc. So that means uh, automation can go wrong, and he is probably right. Uh, it can go wrong in many different ways. A person living in a non-English part of the world, just wanting to find a data picture, starting in a distant foreign language, and moving to a different part of the world. So this is all true, and uh, customization. Uh, the major reason that we are not uh, implementing customization in this as of now is because uh, there are lots of casual users who just pop into Wikipedia to just check on a certain article. They, are, they might not be logged in users. They might not have you know, an account on Wikipedia. So uh, it's, they might then they won't be able to select the languages of their choice. So for a casual user, we are trying to implement it in this manner. So it appears the same for everyone. Right? Uh, then there's been another uh, comment. Uh, I object to the tool learning which languages I prefer from saving my edits. So this violates the user's privacy. This is a, well, not a very valid comment because the languages that we are saving, the previous choices, are being saved as cookies in the user's own database. We are not saving anything in our own data, in our databases. So this, uh, might, this is not a threat to privacy as this guy seems to think. OK, so last um, I've rushed through, I suppose. So we come to the demo part. Uh, Okay. Um, okay. So this is an article, and this is how it looks right now. It's by it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Oops. Basically, I wanted to show you how you can turn on this beta feature and try it out yourself. I'm not sure. Any Mac expert here? Mac expert? Okay. Thank you. I'm sure. So it's basically, you should change the screen, and that's not projecting. It's not projecting the browser. Okay, thank you so much. All right. So back to Safari. Uh, this is how a current article of Leonardo DiCaprio looks like. So the language list is uh, really long, right? Uh, hovering the title property I was talking about. Okay, yeah. So the title property you see the language name in the in English as well as the lo native language. Then, uh, OK, so if you want to turn on the beta feature and try this out yourself, uh, you need to go up to the beta on top here. Uh, of course, you need to have a Wikipedia account. So if you click on beta, you see this. All right, um, my net is not working, so I took these screens from a different part. OK, so then here, right in the bottom, you have the compact language links beta feature. 6,683 users are trying this. Uh, that's nice. So once you check on this and you click Save, you should see, and you go back to the article, you should see something like this. So these are supposedly the preferred languages in Portland and in the US, that is. And uh, there might be some filler languages, such as Afrikaans, because it could not find enough languages to make up the list long enough. So it uses some filler languages randomly picked from the larger box. And 
here you see is the compact language search. Uh, the common languages uh, reappear here and then sorted by region, worldwide America, Europe, and Middle East, Asia, Africa. Okay, so that's about this. Uh, I wanted to show you something more about the CLDR, but I think I can't. It's my net is not working. But CLDR, basically, it's uh, you could just log in there and you could uh, choose your country and then you could add a language if you want to, or you can report bug of a language that you don't think should be there. So that's about it. Any questions? Yeah. So how, how does uh, Wikipedia track what languages are most popular for us? Well, right now it doesn't. That's why that was there was a star against that because we are thinking of a way to do that. That's that would be a good feature because uh, if an article gets more hits uh, in a certain language than the others, then it's more popular. So we are trying to implement that. Not yet figured that out. Any ideas? <laughs> so you're obviously keeping analytics on that. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you said something about the, the trend for using any of these time zones uh, in addition yeah. to their ID. That's pretty clever. I guess you would, you would, it's only available to find time zones? Uh, I'm not 100% sure about that as well, but. Um, it seems like it's. You can also it geo like ID somebody who would time zone. Well, so the, the whole thing was ID. about like the fact that they're using it again. Like mm -hmm. if someone has a UK ID. Yeah. Um, which most likely means it's canceled. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. I, I thought it was a really interesting insight. Mm. Anything else? I'm sorry I wrapped up much before time. So sorry about that. How many, how many interns does Wikipedia normally have? Uh, it depends on the round. Actually, like uh, OPW has two rounds. So the round one round runs parallel to GSOC. So the one that runs parallel to GSOC, uh, OPW has only two or three interns in Wikimedia. And uh, the other round, uh, like the one I was a part of, there were six interns. Um, most of them come from India, like I was. I think it does. It's an extension, basically. So some uh, projects have uh, used ULS for their own different purposes, like I saw, like you saw for the fonts, uh, you could use it for the interface languages. So ULS serves many different purposes. You could customize it, like we did for this project. We customize it to show the languages that we wanted it to. So it's freely available. I just okay. And it, the, it works fine on mobile phones and tablets, so it's responsive.